Products can be defined as artifacts, tasks, and environments. A number of factors influence how people interact with products around them. For example, how they sit in a chair, how they kick a soccer ball, how they use a crutch or a wheelchair, and how they perform different reach, lifts, and other tasks. Anthropometry, or body dimensions, influence how people physically interact with products. In this video, we will learn about the role of anthropometry in designing for human variability. When designing a product, the first step is to define the population of users. Every population is composed of people who are sized and shaped differently. A number of factors influence this variation of body dimensions, age, gender, race or ethnicity, and income and education levels, for example. The aim of designing for human variability is always to accommodate the desired percentage of users in a population. Users are considered accommodated when they are able to interact with the product in a safe, comfortable, and satisfying manner. Accurate anthropometric data are key to achieving the desired accommodation level in the most efficient manner possible. Anthropometric data for user populations can be obtained in a number of ways. Surveys can be conducted to measure the body dimensions of a sample group of individuals who are selected to represent a target user population. An important aspect of these surveys is the oversampling of individuals at the tails of the anthropometric distributions. Design decisions are usually aimed at accommodating the central percentiles of users. This results in a disaccommodation of users at the upper and lower tails of anthropometric distributions. Information about these parts of the distributions are therefore vital to making well-informed and responsible decisions. A number of organizations around the world compile databases through surveys of different populations. Examples of these surveys are Japan's Human Engineering for Quality of Life, China's Human Dimensions of Chinese Adults, India's Survey of Agricultural Workers, Germany's Microcensus, England's Health Survey, and the United States' and Haines and Answer Surveys. Many of these surveys are planned so that the resulting databases are representative of the compositions of the populations. and Haines and Answer are two such surveys. On the other hand, the Caesar Survey of North American and European Adults has resulted in a database that is not representative of any particular population. The remaining portion of this video provides an introduction to the N. Haynes, Answer, and Caesar surveys. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention conducted three national health examination surveys that focused on the U.S. civilian population from 1959 to 1970. In 1971, this was replaced by the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, or N. Haynes. The first, second, and third cycles of N. Haynes were compiled in the years 1971 to 1975, 1976 to 1980, and 1988 to 1994. Since 1999, N. Haynes databases have been compiled every two years in order to keep the anthropometric information as up-to-date and representative of the current U.S. civilian population as possible. However, these recent databases are not as comprehensive as the first three N. Haynes. There are few body measures in addition to stature and body mass index. The 1988 U.S. Army Anthropometry Survey, or ANSWER, is widely used for two reasons. First, it provides information about over 130 body measurements for 2,208 females and 1,774 males. This makes it one of the most comprehensive databases available. The second reason is the use of techniques such as population oversampling and statistical matching in its creation. This allows for future Army populations to be simulated by adjusting the demographic factors as required. The Civilian, American, and European Surface Anthropometry Resource, or CSER, is the first database to contain data from 3D body scans in addition to conventional one-dimensional measures. The sampled population comprises of random North American and European volunteers, so CSER is not representative of any particular population. Representative databases of body dimensions are not available for most of the possible user populations of products. Due to the uniqueness of each population, using other databases in place of accurate information about a user population can result in poorly informed and suboptimal design decisions. Anthropometry synthesis methods provide the means to overcome this lack of data. 
These methods are the focus of another video.